This is going to be a, uh, it, there's your Christmas present, your Apple Music. Is it really 14 bucks a month? For the family share, so the kids have it. We're all on it, except you, because you don't have Apple. Are they paying their share? Yeah, that's what I thought. Can you believe that? 14 bucks a month. I was just going to say how no one pays for music. Well, that's how we pay now. But no one buys an album anymore. I don't. I Maybe use, Doc does. No, I use Pandora or Spotify. Tom, what, what's your favorite Metallica song out of curiosity? Uh, probably Bread Fan or Ride the Lightning. Okay. All right. Very cool. cool. Hasta la vista. Thank you. Actually, hey, man, I got a, 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 a gift for the women, for their wife. A gift? Okay. And how this came up is, actually, it all came up yesterday, this Peloton deal, where the guy on the commercial gets his wife an exercise bike for Christmas. By the way, I think these things are overpriced. Peloton, it's an ingenious business model. It's a subscription model like everybody's doing now. But these bikes are 2200 bucks. He gets his wife a Peloton bike for Christmas. A year goes by, and she is on the bike, and she's working hard, and everything's great, and she kind of documents on video the entire year of exercising. And then she gives him a nice little video saying, oh, I love the bike, and I love it. But then all these women libbers or whoever these people are, and I, how come I never meet these people? There, there's, like, so many people that complain about stuff, but I've never seen them. But anyhow, all these women come out who, once again, I'm not even sure if they exist. It could literally be fake news. But they come out, and they're very upset that, a husband would give his wife a piece of exercise equipment, and I found it outrageous that anybody would be upset about this. And then that led into a lot of gifts that I have gotten Suzanne. Yes, including a vacuum. Yes, including pots and pans. Now, I have never got her like a subscription to Weight Watchers, though. Would that be over the line? I'm asking. Would that be over the line? I don't know. Maybe there's women out there that would love a subscription to a diet plan. Maybe there is. Honest to God, Doc? There isn't one woman that will call up the show and say she wants a subscription to Weight Watchers as a gift. I okay. guarantee that. Okay, fine, Doc. You know what? You know, okay, so let's talk real quick, and I'm sorry, but women's lib. Uh, uh, no, I'm not even going to go Ask there. Ask Tom his suggestion, Tom, though. what is your suggestion, man? Well, I'll keep it FCC friendly. Yes. Um, it's a pair of slippers and a sex toy. Oh, man. Yeah. All if you right. Don't like the slippers, then uh, you know. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. We'll we'll dump him there. Actually, I didn't dump him, but see, that's what you open up to. We're trying to have a serious discussion about gifts. And honestly, if you really do think about gifts, what's the what's the most? Uh, well, okay, give me a gift I gave you that you hated. Give me one. It was a sweater years ago. You bought me a sweater like fifteen years ago that. I well, just couldn't tell you that I didn't like. You couldn't tell me. No. Okay. I felt bad. Rob, what's going on with the Hartford? Hey, Mark. How are you? Good, man. Hey, so uh, back in um, March of uh, this year, I hit an enormous pothole in a King Supers gas station parking lot. Got it. This thing was was, was crazy big. It's like a hot it tub. Damages to the front. <laughs> exactly. Did some damage just to the front of my car. I talked to the store manager. He gave me somebody at the, the King Supers. He gave me somebody at Kroger, the parent company, to call. Called them. Make a long story short, being passed around several different people, finally got to the Hartford, which was the insurance company for the owner of the property. Yeah. <clears throat> talked to them. They opened the claim. On July 11th, I got an email saying um, the Hartford Physical Damage Department has reached an agreed price for the repairs to your vehicle with Abra Auto Body in the amount of $1,258. Okay. So you I know, I'm, call, I'm shocked. I, I, they, Rob, I got to yeah. say, so far I'm liking what you're telling me. I'm shocked they did anything. I really am shocked they did anything. How long was that pothole there? Was it something they neglected for a long period of time? Well, it was, it was it was in March. They had plowed snow, and the snow was all, uh, you know, piled up around it. The snow had started to melt. 
filled in that pothole, and you, you literally, because of the black water in it, it was hard to see. I got gotcha. you. And, and I mean, I was going, I was going very slow. I, I'm still shocked that it went this right so far. So then, what happened? So they offered twelve hundred dollars. Now what? Okay, so I take the vehicle to Everett to get it fixed, and they did a great job. I went and picked it up afterwards, thinking everything's done. Now, they did tell me that they had two addendums to this original estimate that were approved by the Hartford. One was for a front-end alignment and then something else. Sure. So they had multiple things approved here. Got it. Now, fast forward to December, probably last month, I start getting calls from Abra, who's now caliber collision <laughs> nice gentleman said hey i gotta tell you the hartford saying they're not gonna pay for this after all <clears throat> so we need 1800 bucks from you. did you sign anything with the these guy? guys did i sign what did you sign anything with abra <clears throat> when i dropped the vehicle off i signed that you know i was dropping it off i think I'd have to check, Mark, if I signed something when I picked it up that said I'm picking up the vehicle. Yeah, I mean, if you took, they might have an argument. There's a couple things here. One, if they just, who's the new company? I've heard of them. They're huge. They're national. What is it? Caliber. So if Caliber, Caliber, I would assume, I thought Abra was pretty big, too. Um, Did they buy all the Abras? That's my understanding, I guess. Locally, maybe Abra was bigger than Caliber, but as a whole, like you said, Caliber's the bigger company. I'm just, I, I'm curious, I don't know the structure of Abra nor Caliber, so I'm just curious if it was just an asset purchase or what, and why I even care about that is whether you would owe the new people money, even if you, even if they bought the accounts payable, I, I, I don't know, but that's a whole different thing. I don't know if you actually sign something saying you're responsible if the insurance company doesn't pay. Generally, you would sign something. And a company the size of Abra, I would say you would. But even all that aside, why is the Hartford not stepping up at this point? <clears throat> that's what I've been trying to figure out. Cause like I said, I've got an email saying we've agreed to the, the, the price with Abra. And who's and that from? I took my car down. That is from the Hartford. It has a claim number at the top and everything. And then, like I said, the the adjuster at uh, Abra even contacted them twice to get additional work. The original claim was twelve hundred and something. The final and they approved. Was, I think they said eighteen hundred. The Hartford approved the additional. <clears throat> yes. You know what? And, I've and got now, a few ideas. Let me take a break. I got a few ideas on this, Rob. Um, I would like to ask Compass okay, Insurance one thing. Hold tight. 303-713-8255. It's very interesting, and I still got to go back to Doc after the break and hear about the customer. Remember, this is a doctor. Thousands of babies. Apparently, he told one of his customers, he's going to say, what, what do you call them, clients, patients? That's a patient. Okay, one of your patients to hit the bricks. <laughs> Man, everybody's got to have a Christmas album. It's pretty crazy. Hey, I'm sitting here during the break. Rob, I'm getting uh, someone up from uh, Compass Insurance. I want to ask him a question, then I've got some ideas here. But, you know, so Doc says a couple things during the break. First of all, this is the same guy that tossed somebody out, apparently, because, you know, she was going to be a bad patient. I won't call her a customer anymore. But during the break, I found something else very interesting. They're swapping war stories. Doc, how long have you been divorced? Uh, since 1995, and I'm still best friends with my ex-wife. So long time, though. Yeah. So I, I, my ear, I just hear something. I go, what, what the hell? So I got to listen in to what he's telling our guest, Mike. So he tells his girlfriend that moved in with him, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm playing poker Tuesday. Have the moving truck show up then. This is a hardcore doc here. That bedside manner, the little, little, what's going on here, doc? What yeah. happened? <laughs> There's no such thing as privacy anymore. No, not on this show. <laughs> Did that, is that a true story? I wouldn't lie to you. Let's just leave it at that and go on to Mike. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I found that very interesting. That's a, that's very interesting. Then Mike in the same breath, <laughs> our guest. Mike, you said what? I, I forgot. Go ahead. 
What, what, what was your war story there with the bad girlfriend? I threw one out, too. Get closer. What, what, yeah, uh, I threw one out. It was on short notice, like none. And, I, and, and guess who? He, he had someone come pick her up. Guess who? This is great. I called her ex-husband and had him come get her. Man, you guys are – these guys are tough. Ed, am I, I not kidding? These guys are tough. tough. <laughs> the, Dan? I've She's never probably listening. <laughs> can you uh, – Suzanne, can you imagine if I said, babe, I'm playing poker Tuesday. Have the moving truck show up. I'll tell you it's what brutal. would happen in that scenario. All my stuff would be in the moving truck. Mine would go backwards. All right, so let's go to Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, I got to ask you something, man. How are you, sir? Hey, Mark, I'm good. How you doing? Hey, Jeremy, are you uh, – you've been – you're married, though, right? <clears throat> I am, yeah. Okay. I was going to ask you some questions, but I'll stay away from that now. I don't think I can compete with those guys. No, I mean that's tough. Can you imagine a day? Can you imagine his bedside manner? Hey, Doc, when is a, when's my delivery date? Shut up! I mean, well, you know, I'm just I'm not saying that's how it was. I'm sure he was a great doctor, but he's he's our, he's now he's no longer deputy doc. He's a strong guy. He's a strong arm. I don't think I can use strong arm though. We, we'll go somewhere else. But Jeremy, listen, Rob's got a very strange one. So he's got a text. Let me lock you in. Uh, Rob, you actually have the text or you have an email from Hartford, right? I have an email from Hartford, yeah. So he's got an email from Hartford saying, hey, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pay $1,200 to have your vehicle fixed. Bring it over to Abra. So he brings it over to this body shop. They fix it up. In fact, while they're fixing it up, they find some other issues, and Hartford agrees to pay for the alignment and some other things that were added on. Make sense so far? Sure. Okay. So, this I don't think has much to do with it, but Abra sells to another company called Caliber, and now Caliber is calling them going, the Hartford's never paying us. So the Hartford, at some point after they said they were going to pay, uh, it says we're not going to pay now. Rob, when's the last time you talked to the Hartford? I did not talk to them. The insurer, the, um, the body shop talked to them. I think the last time he said now they won't even return his call. Why, don't, why wouldn't you call the Hartford at this point? Before you pick up. <clears throat> I pulled out my notes from when all this happened, Mark, to get the guy I originally talked to at the Hartford. Yeah. And that's my plan, to give him a call. But like I said, I, I, you know, I get these calls. The, today's call from Caliber was, hey, well, you got three choices. You can open a claim with your insurance company. Which, of course, I don't want to do. Or you can pay the bill, or we'll send you the collection. So, Jeremy, a quick... He said, hey, I feel bad, but... Yeah, they got to get paid. But, Jeremy, let me ask you this. If he just has an email from somebody that actually works at the Hartford with a claim number on it, talking about that claim number, they're saying they're going to pay 1200 They also authorized the other work that was done when the vehicle was there. I mean... Do you see any reason how the Hartford could get out of paying now? No, it's 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 weird that they are trying to. Wh- whose insurance company is the Hartford, though? King Supers. So this whole thing started. He was in a King Supers gas station uh, on a snowy day, and they had a ginormous pothole that was kind of filled up and you know a little iced over, so you couldn't tell it was a pothole. And his car gotcha. went okay. into it. So it's. Yeah, so it sounds like they initially accepted the liability, and now they're they're not. Yeah, but it's why would they do that? The only thing it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my suggestion because it's it's not typical. So I would say, you know, to have the caller trying to communicate with Hartford and try and get the story. Sometimes things get lost is, you know, yeah, it gets so, passed around, from, you know, the different entities. Rob, you need to call up with that claim number and see if you can't get it figured out. If not, I will put you personally in touch with Jeremy and the guys at Compass, and they can call over, but I don't think it's at that point now. I bet there's some issue like maybe Abra already got paid and then Caliber bought them and Caliber thinks they should get paid or something along the lines. This might not have anything to do with the Hartford not paying. That's, I, kind, of my, that's kind of what I'm thinking too, Mark. Sorry to cut you off. I, it just it sounds like there's something got lost in translation there. So, Rob, uh, call I don't up. I think they would initially accept it. Yeah, so call up. Don't delete that email. And if it does become a problem or a further problem, they're not going to take care of it. Call us back. Okay. All right. I appreciate it, guys. You got it. Hey, Jeremy, I got a question for you, though. We were talking about, uh, during one of the breaks, we were talking about hail and how eventually, I don't think 
insurance companies in general are going to pay just to have your roof done every three or four years. So in other words, now we have very high deductibles. Some of